Welcome to the news update, reaching you live from our city here in Lagos, Nigeria, the nation's commercial capital. My name is Deborah Eze. We begin from South Africa, where two people died and hundreds evacuated after an underground pipeline in Dublin caught fire, forcing hundreds of local residents to flee their homes. It is alleged that three people were involved in a boat fuel theft attempt, leading to a fire outbreak that engulfed business buildings and an informal settlement. Firefighters, Paramedics, police and metro police responded to the scene and were able to put out the fire. An incident dozens of Sudanese took to the streets of Paris in France on Saturday to protest against the coup d'etat of General Abdel Fattah al bahen after violent protests claimed the lives of three demonstrators and injured around 100. The protesters have rejected the military rule and are now calling for a civilian-led government. And on the Nigerian scene, the initial enthusiasm that greeted the launch of the Inara last Monday seems to have waned as the number of downloads has reduced in the last five days, rising from about 180,000 on Tuesday to roughly 220,000. However, following a barrage of negative reviews, the Inara Speed Wallet, which is meant for consumers, was taken down for about a day, upgraded and then restored. Since the app was returned on Google Play Store and the App Store, Downloads have not risen significantly. As to Nigeria, uncertainty continues to trail federal government's plan to lift the ban placed on the microblogging platform Twitter in Nigeria. 150 days after, and exactly a month since President Muhammad Buhari promised to unban Twitter, there has been major progress in the discussions. Out of the 10 demands by the government, only one is left, which is Twitter having a formal presence in Nigeria. And we move to the foreign scene where Australia and Thailand eased international border curbs significantly on Monday for the first time in 18 months, offering an early lick must test the demand for tourism and travel in Asia following the coronavirus pandemic. Hundreds of vaccinated foreign tourists arrived in the Thai capital for quarantine free travel after the Southeast Asian nation gave the green light for such visitors from more than 60 countries, including China and the United States. And moving on, in Japan, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said it would make full use of the surprisingly strong election wing as it tackles major policy decisions, including trying to pass an extra budget to accelerate the recovery from the pandemic. Stocks surged to a one-month high on relief. The Liberal Democratic Party, LDP, on Sunday held on to its single-party majority in defiance of predictions. Although it did lose a handful of seats, including that of Party Secretary General Akira Amari. And more updates from the foreign scene, a UN conference seen critical to averting the most disastrous effects of climate change launches amid acrimony on Monday after major industrialized nations were accused of bragging or dragging their feet on ambitious new commitments. The COP26 conference in the Scottish city of Glasgow comes a day after G20 big economies failed to commit to a 2050 deadline for halting net carbon emissions, a mark widely cited as a condition for preventing the most extreme global warming. And now we head to the sports scene where Nuno Esperato's Santos' future at Totiam is under discussion by Chairman Daniel Levy and the board. Totiam are eighth in the Premier League and have lost their last two top flight games against West Ham and Manchester United. And also Zlatan Bremovic used the platform of Halloween to tell French superstar striker Mbappe that he needs to taste blood if he is truly to become a football legend. Mbappe is already a World Cup winner and plays alongside Lionel Messi and Neymar at Paris Saint-Germain. However, Mbappe still playing at 40 with AC Milan accused 22-year-old Mbappe of being in the comfort zone at the French club. And finally, the International Table Tennis Federation ITTF Africa Western Region Championship will kickstart today at the Molade Okoya Thermos Hall of Teslim Balogun Stadium, Suruleri, Lagos. Oaks, Nigeria and six West African neighbours, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Benin Republic, Togo and Liberia will take part in the four-day championship in seven events. And now for more information on our top stories, you can watch African TV news on our YouTube channel at www.youtube forward slash TV. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Joint and Pagram, respectively. And also visit our website on www.africunia.tv. And that is for now on News Update today. Many thanks for joining us. I am Deborah Aze. <laughs>